What's up guys? Welcome to Ride the Bean. Today I thought I would show you how I like to brew my coffee at home. Uh, so this is basically two methods of brewing that are the same in a way but also very different. So we have the V60 and the Chemex. These are the most common pour over brewers at least here in, uh, in Scandinavia. So you also have a Kalita and a Clever Dripper and a, yeah, a bunch of, bunch of other ones. Uh, but these are the most common ones. So with these two brewing methods, you basically brew the exact same way, uh, more or less. The difference between them is that on the V60, this is what the paper looks like. And it's very thin. Since the paper is so thin, uh, it doesn't take that long for the water to pass through it, especially when there's coffee in here as well. So you have a much shorter brew than you do with the Chemex, where the filter is a lot thicker. As you can see there are four sides to it here. You can actually unfold the paper like this. But when you're brewing, you're supposed to open one side, like this, and then put the thick side towards where the spout is, like that. And then on the V60, make a fold where the, the press seam is. A few times it has uh, happened that the, 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 the press hair has loosened and I got coffee everywhere. That's not nice. But if you fold it like this, you'll avoid that because the, it won't open. Then you just open it up like this and put it in. Now as you can see now, there's a little bit of a difference in the filters and that's where the main difference of these two methods is. If you watched my last video where I explained about the Kuka Cafe, I also talked a little bit about the grind size and that also come into play here. Since the filter is much thicker, you want a much coarser grind for this brew than you do for this. Because if you grind the same size for this as you do for this, then it's gonna take a long time for the water to pass through and the coffee will taste bitter. It's gonna be over extracted and vice versa. If you use the grind size for this, for the V60 as well, it's just, the water is just gonna, just gonna pass through and uh, not extract everything that it should. And the coffee will taste a bit sour. So this is a very, very simple method. This is how I like to brew my coffee in the morning. Just um, when I feel groggy and uh, I don't really want to be awake, I just uh, walk over to my coffee pot and I brew while the coffee fumes wake me up. I'm gonna brew these two at the same time now and uh, I'll show you just the technique. You can of course use whatever technique you want, but this one is my technique and I think it works pretty well. First we need water. As you can see, these papers are dry now. So if I just put the coffee in and then start brewing, you're gonna have a coffee that tastes of paper. You, you notice this papery, dry taste to the coffee. To avoid that, you want to rinse the paper first. Just pour enough water over it to make it wet. Make sure that the paper taste gets washed out. And while you're doing this, you're also heating up the brewing vessel which will keep the coffee warmer. And then we just empty the water here. Now we just uh, put the coffee in. And also here, we use 60 grams per liter of water. Now I'm gonna brew half a liter in each, so that'll be 30 grams in each of them. I would also recommend getting a brewing scale. Of course you don't need one, but it's gonna make it a lot easier. Um, you can of course measure the water and everything beforehand, but I find it a lot easier to brew with a scale that has a timer and a scale. Like, like this. This is a just a normal, simple coffee brewing scale, digital scale. It's gonna make it a lot easier to, to do the same thing the same way over and over again. So before I start pouring, I like to just uh, give it a little bit of a shake, make the coffee grounds flat, so that uh, everything gets uh, extracted evenly. 
And then I start pouring at the edge of the coffee and then I go in circles towards the middle. And then I let it sit for about 30 seconds. I do the same here. With this, I'm pouring about, uh, about 100 grams uh, on the first pour. And then I let it, let it sit for about 30 seconds. This is called the bloom. This helps degas the coffee and make the coffee sort of ready to accept more water, if you, if you can say it that way. Sounds a bit strange. And then I just uh, keep pouring. So I'm pouring in three rounds. So first, about 100 grams and then another 100 grams and then I uh, finish with the same 100 grams so 300 grams of water total now wait about 30 seconds between each pour and like you can see I'm, I'm pouring with a little bit of a strange looking kettle it's called a gooseneck kettle that has the spouts at the bottom instead of the top when you pour from uh, something with the, the spout at the top the water tends to spread out a lot more but when you pour it with the spout at the bottom you get a lot more control the stream is a lot more even so i would recommend getting one of these types of kettles um, if you plan on brewing this way this is my personal favorite it's uh, from a company called fellow uh, it's a little bit expensive if you get the hario one it's a lot cheaper but uh, they have the same functionality this one keeps the, the heat better because it's double insulated and it has a thermometer at the top. But that's just uh, for the geeks, basically. You don't really need that. Yeah, and now it looks like the coffee is ready. So let's taste it. And as you can see here, the surface is completely flat. That means all the water went to the coffee at, uh, at the same rate. So now all that's left is just to remove the tape. And then pour a great cup of coffee. Mm. Beautiful. Love this coffee. So the difference in taste between these two is uh, this one is much lighter because of the thicker paper. It absorbs even more of the, the, the oils and what gives the coffee its body. So it feels a lot lighter in the mouth. And you get a little bit brighter tastes and clearer tastes in this. This is a lot faster. So if time is of the essence, this is much better. Uh, but, but here you get a little bit of a thicker body to the coffee, so mouth feel. And with the V60, the mouthfeel is a little bit more rich, you can say. I feel that sort of the sweetness in the cup uh, comes out more. Um, but that's just my personal, personal uh, opinion on it. Everyone has their own favorite method. But yeah, that's it. That's the pour over method. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something maybe uh, if you have any questions just uh, send me a message or leave a comment down below and i will see you in the next episode peace out <laughs>